Hi folks, my name is Glenn Martin and today I'm taking you through a comparison of the ZWO AM5 equatorial mount versus the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro equatorial mount. I'm doing this comparison from a size and weight perspective because I feel like there's probably quite a few people like myself who have the EQ6R Pro and are thinking about upgrading to the AM5 or conversely, maybe you're buying your first heavier duty mount and you're weighing up, are you going to look at the Skywatcher mount or the ZWO mount? But let's get the comparison itself started. You already know the weight of the AM5, it's at five kilos. I'm gonna have all of those up here. This is gonna be funny. Oh Christ. And I'm not exaggerating. Let's get that in there. Oh boy. And that's 17.3 kilos uh, versus the five. So this is 17.3, but I haven't included the counterweights. So the counterweights, you've also um, got to use at least one, depending on the weight of your, your rig. And these are five kilos each or two. So for comparison, I shoot with a William Optics Fluorostar 91, ZWO 2600 monocam, filter wheel, other bits and bobs, uh, including the ZWO ASI Air Pro. This comes into just around nine kilos. At nine kilos, oh, put that down. I have to use both counterweights with the EQ6. Uh, with the AM5, I do not. So they recommend with this, for payloads above 13 kilos, you must use a five kilo counterweight, no more than five kilos, by the way. And they also suggest that for payloads above 10 kilos, it's highly suggested that you use a counterweight. It's not so much the mandatory bit, that's the 13 and above, but uh, that, that is definitely in there. And I come in at nine kilos, so I'm doing fine. So in total, we've got 27.3 kilos over here with the counterweights versus the five. And you've already seen how much that, that I was struggling around with it. All right, so what about the rest of it? The legs, where'd the legs go? So the legs, 2.3 kilos uh, for the legs. Uh, but in my case as well, I have the pier extension. Uh, so the pier extension is another 1.6. And so that takes me to a total of 3.9 uh, for the legs. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit and hopefully not have this fall on top of me. The Skywatcher legs. Now this I find hysterical. They are 7.5 kilos. The legs weighs more uh, than the head, uh, which, which I, it, I just find that so funny. So you've got the leg comparison there. We've got a difference, I've, I've got it all off camera, if you hadn't guessed. Got a difference of, um, what, three kilos, three and a half kilos. Uh, math will correct up there for me. So what we're now left with is for, in a, in a fair fight, and this is assuming that my payload over here is under that 13 kilo mark, um, noting that even with nine kilos, I've had to use both counterweights on the EQ6R Pro. What we have here is a total of 34.8 kilos worth, uh, or 76 pounds, 76.7 pounds, versus 8.9 kilos over here. That is a difference of over 25 kilos between the two, uh, or more than 55 pounds, about 57 pounds. So there is a lot of weight difference in there. Now, I do want to acknowledge a small caveat in, in all of this weight mix, and um, just trying to make a little bit of room here, uh, but I do need this for what I'm about to show you. So with the tripod, it is so light, and I will be honest that when I do have the pier extension on in particular, and I use these legs at full extension. So full extension brings the deck height up to about 80 centimeters. Uh, when the legs are fully extended and the scope is on top, it does feel just, just a tiny bit tippy. Uh, so it is, it is all very uh, light. So what I do is I have my 7.7 .7 kilo EcoFlow battery, which is going, I was using for the EQ6 anyway, so I kind of don't, 
include that in the weight overall. This has to be uh, very close to the big mount. And this will actually sit quite happily down in this little uh, tray here, uh, which ZW themselves suggests you, you put extra weight into. I've seen people put uh, dumbbells in, barbells, whatever you want to call them, rocks, extra counterweights. So yeah, I'm, that's, I'm using that on site anyway, so I don't kind of think of that in my overall weight payload. Let's get that out of there. So why did I get the AM5? Honestly, the weight of moving this around and getting it set up, I, I live in an apartment complex and I have to roll everything over some wooden decking. So when you're breaking down at three o'clock in the morning, for, for example, I'm really conscious of the amount of noise that I'm making. Also, just, just the setting up, it's, it's heavy. Make no mistake, it's heavy. Um, and because every single time I just, I need to balance it, it takes that little bit longer to, to set up um, before I'm ready to polar align. I'm not talking ages. I mean, it, yeah, it might take me from the moment I get up there about 15 minutes to get, get it all, all in place, pointing in the right direction. It's closer to five minutes with this little guy. So we're talking a 10 minute difference. It, it's not that much, but it does count. Uh, the guiding between the two I've found to be same same, uh, especially at my focal length, which is about 430 millimeters. Uh, so guiding, I haven't seen uh, overly improved guiding with this. I've, I've only had it up on the roof maybe four or five times. I feel like my guiding is a hair better, but anything under one second uh, in total anyway, uh, at this focal length, it was fine. Uh, so I wasn't having any problems there. Another thing that I also noticed, which really isn't a factor into why I would have bought it or not, but it's just an observation. The slewing on the AM5 versus the EQ6, it slews that bit faster. Um, yeah, we're, we're not talking super fast, but it is, it is definitely faster. And it's also quieter. Again, not a big issue. It's not as though this is making a whole heap of noise, but yeah, just the faster slewing, a little bit quieter. It's, just those things that all add up to why I'm really happy with my AM5 mount. So the cost. The cost is a um, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty big difference. So not only do we have quite a large weight difference uh, in the ZWO's favour, uh, but there's also a cost difference which is uh, in the Skywatch's favour. So the EQ6R with tripod in Australian dollars as I've looked it up at time of filming, uh, you're looking at usually $2,999. Let's call it three grand. So that versus the ZWO coming in at uh, $4,199 with the uh, ZWO carbon fiber legs. Chuck on another $329 for the peer extension. But we're still talking a difference of 1,200 Australian dollars for just both setups with the legs or a difference of $1,500 with the period extension as well. So what would I recommend if, if I was doing this all over again? So I got this at the end of 2020. Uh, like a lot of us, uh, I was upgrading my Astro game. The AM5 wasn't on the horizon then. Would have I bought it if it had have been? Probably not, because for me personally, I was very new in my journey. This was my first big boy mount. A big boy pants! Look, I'm wearing a belt! I got big boy pants on! I was spending a lot of money, uh, what I felt was more than a lot of money to, to begin with. So even if this had have been available, potentially I wouldn't have got it. In hindsight, yes. Um, for the weight, portability, the speed of setting it up alone, I would have done that. If you were setting up a permanent uh, pier, for example, bolted into the ground, so you're not doing that load unload every night, and you didn't want to have the latest greatest, this is gonna do fine. This will work more than good. And even if you're not using a permanent pier, if the weight, hauling around the weight isn't an issue, then because it, it is, you've already seen, it's significant. You're going to save a lot of money and, and at $1,200 there's a decent set of filters or there's maybe your next scope depending on your focal length or any number of things that you can go and spend your money on in the meantime. But if you do struggle with the weight a bit or you do want more portability, if I was going to go off to a dark site where I couldn't park my car right there and there was a small hike, 
was never going to happen. This I can now envisage the possibility uh, of going somewhere less accessible than, than my rooftop and actually being able to get it all out there. So it's, it's not as portable as like your little Skywatcher Star Adventurers, let's make no mistake, um, because you still do need your big battery uh, to, to, run, to run everything. But yeah, so for, from a portability perspective, I would be going on this side. Versus other brands, I've got no idea. This was my first big boy mount, uh, but prior to this, I was using the Star Adventurer like a lot of other people. Uh, so you're looking at the sum total of my big mount experience. I've been more than happy with the AM5. It's really suited what I wanted to get out of it. So I hope you found some of that useful and maybe some things to help you make your own decision about whether which one do you buy uh, for your next or is it worth it upgrading for you? It's definitely been worth it upgrading for me and thankfully because I have sold this and, and it's going to a new home tomorrow, it's helped offset some of the costs a little. So if that was useful for you, I'd love it if you hit that like button and yeah, maybe chuck us a little subscribe as well and you'll see more content like this around astrophotography. But if you're also interested in photography more in general, you're going to see more of that coming to this channel as well. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Fucking hell. This is 17.3 kilos. And let's just get it in the same 